I'm American made I got American parts I got American faith In America's heart America's the greatest country in the world. Welcome to the Breitbart News Sirius XM special. The first of, we hope, very many American songwriter. Mike Slater, I'm your host. Why are we here today? We all know, we all agree, we're in a pretty tough spot in our country right now. I think a lot of people think that the solution is political, and there's definitely some political answers, there's no question about that, we gotta get that right. But Andrew Breitbart, his famous line is, politics is downstream of culture. If we wanna change America, we gotta win some political battles, there's no doubt, but we gotta take our culture back first and foremost. And one could argue, I would, that the last remaining aspect of our culture that is still outspoken in loving America, still outspoken in speaking out about, about faith and freedom and family and the good, the beautiful and the true and telling these stories that matter the most is country music. That's why we're here. We're in Nashville, Tennessee with three of the best songwriters that Nashville has to offer. All of them have been featured on Breitbart.com as well. And I wanna get right to them. First, we got Michael Farron, two-time Grammy-nominated, four-time Dove Award-winning songwriter, moved from Texas to Nashville 20 years ago. Lauren Daigle's Grammy-nominated, now platinum single, Trust in You. Reba McIntyre's Grammy-winning album track, Sing It Now, Let It Rain, by Michael W. Smith, and his latest song was just cut by Lee Bryce and For King and Country. We're gonna hear that in a little bit. That's Michael Farron. Next to him, we got Neil Thrasher, Alabama native. Hundreds of songs recorded over the last 25 years. Jason Aldean, Kenny Chesney, Rascal Flatts, Tim McGraw, Luke Bryan, Ronnie Dunn, Carrie Underwood, Reba, Montgomery, Jenry, Lee Bryce, and his latest has caused quite a bit of trouble. <laughs> You're welcome. For, for, <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. This is the guy we got to thank for it all. Uh, his uh, songs have sold over 40 million records. He's got a podcast out as well. We'll give you a little hint about what that song is coming up. At the, song, the podcast is called Try That. And then Jeffrey Steele, the legend. Nashville Songwriting Hall of Fame, written for Eric Church, Tim McGraw, you name it. Multiple Grammy nominations, a Golden Globe nomination, over 500 songs cut in an eight-year period, over 100 artists, over 100 singles released, more than 75 gold and platinum records. Michael Farron, Neil Thrasher, Jeffrey Steele. Gentlemen, what an honor. Thank you. Glad Thanks to be for with you. Us. Man, it's great to be here. I'm gonna start with you, Jeffrey. Yes, sir. What's going on in our country, man? What's going on in our country, and what can country do, music do what role can country music play in bringing our country back? Well, Mike, thanks for having us. And um, I think country music, like, like you said, is the last bastion of, of our, one, one of our most important aspects of our culture. And, and we're, we're looking at Hollywood right now. We're, look, we're looking at all the messages we're getting from the media, um, all the things that we're supposed to be doing and all the narratives we're supposed to be living by. And for guys like us in the country music business, we're, we're kind of being shunned away from writing those very themes that have built not only the genre, but the culture that it's built on. And for the simple man, the common man, uh, the very simple things that we love and live by, faith, family, God, morality, ethic. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, the funny thing for me is I've been writing songs about this for my whole career, over 40 years. And in the last four years, I've been getting beat over the head by the industry. Like, why are you writing these songs? Uh -huh. I said, I've always written these songs. <laughs> I've always written these songs. Yeah. It's just, it's a, we're in a different world now. And I, I, my, my, my overall thought is that, that we are playing a game with Hollywood in the media of, of kill or be killed. And conservatives tend to just throw penalty flags. And we need to really start saying what we really feel and what we really believe and, yeah. not, and not hide behind it anymore. We have to really get on the field and take care of business now because we're way behind the eight ball. Mm. That's how Amen. I feel. Neil, what are, these, what are these stories, what are these themes, these lessons that we need to get out there, we need to speak more about, that you're writing about? I, you know what? It's, we're just speaking the truth, and it's all based around truth. The, the central theme to me is just truth, especially with this last thing, with Try That in a Small Town. It was just, we just wrote the truth. And um, to me, that's just the theme around everything, especially now. We just... We were writing, you know, safe songs to begin with, and 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 it was it got kind of boring, especially in this climate. And um, I don't know. To me, it's just the it's just the speaking the truth today. And to Neil's point, that is the whole discussion: the truth. Yes. 
nobody's telling the truth. And so it, the, the very the very idea that we would speak the truth is like, oh no, I know, yeah, you know. And and like he said, we've been we've been we've been just sitting here writing these things forever, and and now it's it's you know the pushback is just incredible. Yeah. Right? I want to lead that into Michael, our first song. We're talking about these big things, right? We're touching on these, the politics and our culture, big picture. But I love this first song you have because this just gets to the core of every person's life, individual's life. Everyone can relate to this song in a powerful way. Tell us about the background of this first song you want to play for us. Well, um, so, I'm, good Lord, I was raised a Baptist preacher's kid in North Texas and uh, five generations deep, both sides of my family, and uh, moved to Nashville 20 years ago. But my dad and I have stayed just super, super close. And the song, uh, wrote with a couple of buddies of mine, Ken Hart and Garrett Jacobs, we, um, we just, you know, a year and a half ago, talking about our dads. And uh, my, at the time, my dad was in a real bad way, kidney failure, uh, and just had went downhill really fast. And uh, the idea just came from, we're so busy that we tend to mute our phones a lot. And uh, my dad calls and checks on me just about every day. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm in the middle of a session or whatever, and I hit mute. And, you know, the, the idea was, you know, at some point, what you are in the middle of usually isn't as important as actually picking up the phone and saying, hey, dad, how you doing? And, uh, and so the genesis of it was literally, and it's stories for other days, but the three of us have very unique dad dynamics. I happen to be the one in the group that's super tight with mine and was in the middle of watching him decline very rapidly. And uh, I don't know, the song fell out in about 25 minutes. And at the end of it, we all just kind of looked at each other and went, well, that's convicting. <laughs> so, and I can honestly say now, the song being called Checking In, my dad checks in more than ever now. And now I'm really compelled to have to say hello because he has been, he's, he has slung it around like a sword at this point. It's, it's great. <laughs> but the who can't hit the red button and say, yeah. no, not right now, I'm busy, but, you. But I will tell you the stories over the last uh, year and a half of where I released it just on social media and then for King and Country and Lee Bryce, the stories of people saying, wow, I called my dad. Or wow, I saved, I went back and found all the voicemails my dad left me. I had a guy a buddy of mine in a cigar shop the other night. He said he lost his dad 10 years ago and he spent most of a week digging back through stuff to try to find the voicemails and he found one. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting in a cigar shop crying and saying, I found one voicemail from my dad. He said, I'm so glad you got that song out there. So it's, it really is just about what's important is just staying connected to the people that matter the most. And in our culture, it's distance and it's, and it's busy and it's, mm -hmm. and it's chaotic. And at some point you plant your feet and go, no, I'm going to lean into what matters the most. And that's the relationships God has blessed us with. And family's messy. It doesn't matter. Pick up the dang phone. So Let's that's... all slow down and listen in. <laughs> Checking in. Hey there, son, it's Dad again I know you're busy, I'm just checking in You can call me later, you get a chance I don't want nothing, I was just wondering how you been There's no telling how many times I've let that message play He's been gone a while And it still feels like yesterday I even call him back sometimes Wishing he'd pick up again I got a lot more to say these days Than I did back then Hey dad, it's me checking in I'm doing all right Work's been a little hard But don't worry, I told mom I'd get by there later on Cut the yard, the kids are good You'd sure be proud Yeah, I probably should let you go I'm just missing you right now There's no telling how many times I've let that message play He's been gone a while and it still feels like yesterday I even call him back sometimes Wishing he'd pick up again I got a lot more to say these days than I did back then Hey dad, it's me checking in I'm just checking in
no telling how many times I've let that message play He's been gone a while and it still feels like yesterday I even call him back sometimes Wishing he'd pick up again I got a lot more to say these days than I did back then It's me checking in I'm just checking in mm. Hey there son It's dad again I know you're busy I'm just checking in Do it son Yeah buddy Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Woo. Jeffrey, what speaks to you about that song? Man. You're not alone. I, my, uh, <laughs> it's a lot for me. My, my, my father passed away uh, very young um, in my life. And um, there's so much there that, that, that I didn't get. And, um, you know, he's with me now. He's with me everywhere I mm. go. And he's, he's in every one of my songs and his story is in every one of my songs, and that's true. It's truly what it's all about, you know. At the at the end of the day, and um, but my dad, you know, he he left us really young, and and he he just always he. I worked in a machine shop with him. He was a machinist, and he fired me because he was worried I was going to cut my fingers off. And he knew how much I loved to play guitar. Oh, wow. He loved to play guitar. He wanted to be a songwriter. He was a World War II vet. And he was raising five kids, and and he saw it in me, and and that's my famous story. He fired me, that's amazing. and I went off and joined. I said, "I'll show him," and I went off and joined a band, and you know, I'll show him, and he, and, sure and, and, uh, he knew oh, what he awesome. was doing. And wow. and so when I hear that, that just it takes me through a lot. So I hate you for playing that. <laughs> what, a, what a story. What a story. Well, Mike, you must be inundated with stories like that, man. That's Everyone's beautiful, got one. Like, that's pretty cool. That's you beautiful. wrote a thing that spoke to people so powerfully that it just pulls up all this stuff that they wouldn't normally otherwise be thinking and talking about, and they just pour it out to you, man. Man, nothing, nothing has meant more to me than for people to, to respond and personally say or send us notes saying, hey, I, have, I picked up a phone and called my dad. Yeah. And, and then it's, some of it's heartbreaking. It's like, wish I, you know, wish my dad would even speak to me. And you just go, God, I don't even know how to respond to this. I mean, there's, I think the first time I posted it, there was 5,000 plus comments and, and I really tried to respond to most of them. <laughs> but, I, but I care a lot about people and I felt like I, like I wanted to, like, it was like, uh, it's like therapy and comments. And I was just like, I can't do this after about 100. It's like, because yeah. it was so heavy on people and yet needful. Yeah, I mean, no, it's needful, man. Yeah, that's it's it. Oh, that's a great. That's a great word. Needful. And my, I think just great dads are everything. And in in the, again, yeah. in this culture, it's one thing that we're really missing. Yes, sir. We're really, really missing. Uh, and and we could speak about that all day long. But uh, um, a great family, a great mom, obviously, but a great dad to a girl, to a daughter, to a son. Yeah. Uh, is everything. Yeah, it's everything so, in this society. And you played a part in rebuilding those connections again. That's pretty special. Grateful for it, bro. That's one of the gratifying parts about yeah. what we do is the satisfaction he gets and the feeling he gets knowing it touched that many people. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like... Crazy. You, we don't, you know, the, the money's like a what you get, you know, what you make doing this job. If you're fortunate enough to be successful at it, that's the, that's yeah, the reward right there. Neil, you wrote a thing that touched a nerve maybe a little different nerve but another one that ne was needful in this country Ooh. Ooh. we doing that one first oh, let's hear right. it brother <laughs> let's go right to it Ooh. going hot I remember the day I texted you I did <laughs> I like, Neil way to go I know he, uh, what he, happened what, he the first time you heard me, it yeah he was texting me like like when it came out and when it blew up or whatever he was, he was like I was, I was like a, a Merle, it was tight, a Merle buddy. moment hang on tight man. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a that's a terrible place to be, right? I mean, we should be able to be able to say these things. Uh, I mean, because free speech is all we got, and, and, and songwriting is like like you said, it's the last bastion of free speech, really. And the uh, song was okay; it was doing great and on its own, and hadn't really caused you know much controversy until the video came out. And the video came out, and it's okay to hear some of those things, but when you visually have to look at some of it, and it was like real footage, yeah. 
you know, of, of writing and things like that. And, and people did not want to see it. Yeah. And all of a sudden it blew up. And then when, when the video became a controversy, then the song became a controversy. And I was called racist and bigot and you name it. I was called that by like Whoopi Goldberg on The View. And all these people were calling the songwriter. These, these songwriters must be real racist. And I'm going, you got to be kidding me. So people were calling me and texting me going, man, are you okay? Right now, and I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> this is why I do what I do. And we got Whoopi Goldberg here right now. Whoopi, come on in. <laughs> come on in. Here's your front row seat to Neil. Right. Let's, let's hear this racist song. Who was it that said it? Whoopi, Sonny, and Joy. I mean, it was like the three of the most depressing people on the planet. And yeah, three of the happiest. And, uh, I don't get it. It makes no <laughs> sense. What caused all that trouble, brother? Let's hear it. You can play what you want. Sucker punch somebody on the sidewalk Carjacking an old lady at a red light Pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store You think you're cool, act a fool if you like Cuss out a cop, spit in his face Stomp on the flag and light it up Yeah, you think you're tough Well, try that in a small town We'll see how far you make it down the road Round here we take care of our own You cross that line, it won't take long For you to find out, I recommend you don't And try that in a small town Got a gun that my granddad gave me they say one day they're gonna round up Well, that shit might fly in the city Good luck, try that in a small town We'll see how far you make it down the road Around you we take care of our own You cross that line, it won't take long For you to find out, I recommend you don't Small town full of good old boys Raised up right If you're looking for a fight Well, try that in a small town See how far you make it down the road Around you we take care of our own You cross that line, it won't take long For you to find out I recommend you don't Try that in a small town Try that in a small town Did you hear anything controversial? No, no, no. Grandpa's gun? It's a shotgun. That's it, yeah. No. It's a shotgun. <laughs> How about good old boys raised up right? I love that line. What is it about the small town? What is that small town value we got to get back to? What is the small town value we're missing that got us in this mess? I think it's the message from the small town. I mean, it's like you see so many things going on in the big cities that would that aren't going to fly there. And, and I think people need to take note of that. I wish more country artists would start singing more messages like that. I mean, they, you know what I'm saying? It's like we were talking about Merle back in the day. Hank Jr., Country Boy Can Survive. Yeah. All that stuff. It's, it's there and it's truth. It's just people, they don't want to acknowledge it. You know, the left hates the truth. It drives them insane. Yeah. Jeffrey. Yes, sir. What do we got next here? About loving this country, about loving America, not being afraid to be a patriotic American, like those legends you spoke of moments ago. Yeah, um, crazy day. I, I, I had a day off, a rare day off, and I was going to go out and, uh, and just enjoy the day. Beautiful sunny day in April, and I got a call from a friend of mine named Ira Dean. He said, hey, what are you doing today? I said, I'm not writing a song. Uh, it's my day off, and I'm, I'm going to get out on my bike or something. I'm going to do something in the sunshine today. 
He goes, hey, I'm over here with Aaron Lewis, and, and, and we need you, man. We need you to come over here and write this song. I said, oh, I, and I was, I just was, I just been writing two weeks straight. You know what I mean? Just wanted a day off. Just wanted to get outside. And uh, he goes, man, he's going to be cutting it about a week, and, and he just wants to write a song for his fans. I said, okay, I only got two hours, so I went over there, and uh, we started talking. And then the second I walk into Aaron's house, he had, th- you know, it was like the old Elvis thing. He had like three TVs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a CNN and an MSNBC and a Fox all at the same time going. Just on the coffee table. You know, he's just sitting there watching, and he's just going off. And, and he goes, look, he goes, look, they're never going to play me on the radio. Uh, they hate what I'm saying. But my fans love what, I, what I'm saying, and my fans are small-town America. And, and I was going to say to the small-town America point, my shows, that when I travel around the country, it's all small-town America. And small-town America is awesome. And, and it's not racist. And, and I play these little shows and the whole town shows up and I meet these families where there's, there's maybe three black adopted kids in a white family. And then I hear like on the shows like The View how like places in the country like between Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, it's all racist. You don't wanna, we don't want to get back to that era. And, and if anybody knows, you grew up there. If you go down in that part of the country, it is the most integrated part of the country yep. in America. Blacks and whites all getting along. And, and I'm down there, and I play, you do too. I, yeah. I play all my shows down there. That's where I live, telling my stories and singing my songs and getting my inspiration. And um, so, so I'll preface the song with that, you know? <laughs> and and, and so, so we started writing this song, and as we started getting farther into it, we realized, wow, this could be something. And, and the first night, uh, Aaron took it out and played it live. He didn't know the words yet, and he had the words on a stool. And Ira texted me from the show and said, oh, my God, Aaron's singing the song. He doesn't know the words yet, but the crowd knows the words. Wow. And they're singing over, over him. So I went, okay. And then, like Neil, my phone started blowing up when this thing came out, um, July 4th, um, 2021. Nice. So here it is. Am I the only one? Am I the only one here tonight Shaking his head, thinking something ain't right Is it just me? Am I losing my mind? Am I standing on the edge of the end of time? Am I the only one? Please tell me I'm not Who thinks they're taking all the good we got And turning it back Well, I'll be damned I think I'm turning into my old man Am I the only one Willing to bleed Take a bullet for being free Screaming what the fuck at my TV Telling me Are you telling me you coming down in a town near you watching the threads of all glory come undone am I the only one not brainwashed making his way through the land of the lost still gives a shit worries about his kids why they try to undo all the things he did If you don't like it, there's the fucking door This ain't the freedom we were fighting for It was something more It was something more Am I the only one Willing to fight For my love of the red and white And the blue Burning on the ground Another statue coming down In a town near you
am I the only one who quits singing along every time they play a Springsteen song? Am I the only one still sitting here, still holding on, holding back my tears for the ones you paid with the lives they gave? God bless the USA. Watching the threads of all glory come undone. I'm not the only one. I can't be the only one. I'm not the only one. That's bringing it. <laughs> That's bringing it. <laughs> Another statue coming down in a town near you. What a line. Oh God. <laughs> I wanted to ask you what line you're most proud of out of that line. Out of that the song. Springsteen part. Wow, why? <laughs> because. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because I grew up as a teenager in the 60s and the 70s on the the counterculture message of Neil Young and Bruce Springsteen and uh, even newer bands like Rage Against the Machine and, and that, are, that are pumping this stick it to the man philosophy, right? Yeah. And um, all these years later, the, first, the very first commercial thing that Bruce Springsteen does is for this current administration and the current politic and narrative. And I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> And, and it, it made me realize that, that this whole thing, we have a lot of uh, truly, ha and it's, it's all the music that I grew up with, yeah. you know, before I discovered Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson and, and country music as a teenager. Um, they're all government approved rock stars. They're not, they're, they're not who I thought they were. None of them. None of them are. Every one of them. They're making you, whether or not you have a vax or you don't have a vax, they're making you get a vax to go to their show mm -hmm. and paying $200 for the ticket. It's like, wait a minute, that's not America. That's not what a rock star does. A rock star, <laughs> a rock star doesn't tell you to do what the government tells you to do. Like being a conservative is the countercultural it's, thing today. And, it is, and we are now the outlaws of Christian conservatives are now the outlaws of the world. Wow. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty awesome, yeah. I think. Yeah, and and I we're it. ready. Yeah, that's <laughs> But our hats are going to be white. <laughs> uh, Michael, the, what, the, the idea that I'm feeling like the only, I'm the only one, can you speak to that? Because we feel like that way in a lot of realms of life sometimes too. Well, specifically to a song like that, I, I, I've come from a small town in Texas. And, and you, what you see on the news, you, you would think that there's, uh, it's just to say it's very loud on both sides. But from where I'm from and from what I see, and traveling a lot like you guys do in smaller towns and common man people, it's been silent for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think that that whole only one, I'm not the only one, I don't even think that's got started good yet. I think that's about to stand up even louder than we ever imagined. I think, Cause from where I hear and what I see, people who have tried to be, not neutral, but people who've tried to be peaceful mm. and tried to be calm are finally reaching the edge of like, okay, we're past the point of calm now. Yeah. And I don't think they've waited too late. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of hope and a lot of, you know, a lot of hopeful outlook for what I believe is about to be a swell. But yeah, not the only one. And I think all those others who are not the only one are about to get really loud. Yeah, the answer to the question is no. And when all those men and women sing that at that concert, they, feel, they realize the answer is no, and, and, yeah. not and the only one. I have never, I have never written a cuss word in a lyric before. And, no and when, we got, when we got to that <laughs> moment, <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Aaron just looked at me. Wow. Aaron Lewis looked at me. He goes, my fans are so ready. He goes, it has to be in there. He, wow. he, he goes, he goes, I'm more prone to cuss, but I don't really want to. But my fans are so fed up and, and nobody knows. Everybody's working. We're all working. 
we don't have time to go. We don't have time to go and protest. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I could go so off hey, on the rails. Hey. There's a difference between gratuitous and passion, right? There's gratuitous, but then there's just passion. It's like, yeah. no, that's how you feel. Hey, we're not the only ones. You're listening to this right now. You're watching this right now. Just know that you're not the only one. We're all here together. We're telling stories. We got more stories, more songs, more music next. After this, Sirius XM, Breitbart News, American Songwriter. Welcome back to our special, American Songwriter, Breitbart News, Sirius XM, live from Nashville, just telling stories, singing songs, making music, it's beautiful. Michael Farron's here, Neil Thrasher, Jeffrey Steele. Gentlemen, thanks again for being here. It's been awesome. Love it. Let's Thank do another you. round. What do you say, huh? Let's yeah, go. Come on. So, we're talking about the things that make America great, things we got to get back to in our country. And one of them certainly faith. Every time there's an article on Breitbart.com about faith, it explodes. I think people are thirsty. People are hungry. It's something needed, as you talked about earlier, Michael. That's my intro into your song here. And also, I love this, because all these songs have been love songs in a way, but this is just a true, powerful love song in a, in a unique way that I've never heard before. What's the genesis behind Jericho? Well, I think, I mean... Jericho is, the, is, if you're familiar, again, I was raised the Baptist preacher's kid, so I've slept under more pews than most people will ever sit in kind of a thing, you know? So, uh, so let's just say I've heard all the Bible stories more than once. And uh, I don't know, a few years ago, I was sitting just by myself with a guitar and this song just kind of fell out. But tied to the hills of kind of where I was in life in a really tough spot in relationships. And um, the whole idea of the, the story of Jericho, if you know it at all, uh, you know, the Israelites had to go out in the desert and they're like, we're going to take this city. And God's like, right, well, I've got a great plan for this. And they're like, yeah, what is it? And they said, well, kids, we're going to march around. And they're like, we're going to do what? And if you know the story, they march around it for a week. And on the last day, they march around it. And you got to remember, it's hot and nasty and dusty. And they're, and they're so confused. Like, they're just angry Israelites walking around <laughs> the desert out there. And if you went to church and you, <laughs> you're not a complete heathen, then you know that the walls came down. Josh fought the battle of Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just, it hit me of like, this. it's a lot like the human heart. And uh, fortunately, I've been married 30 years. Uh, year 25 was a doozy. The wheels came off in the most stunning way, uh, ways nobody could have ever dreamed. And uh, and the just truth is everybody goes through mess. I mean, life is life can be tough. And uh, I'm really grateful uh, for a wife uh, and others who kept marching around a, a very hard heart until the wall started to crack and come down and, and vice versa. Uh, she would say the same about me that just, I think gone in our culture, not gone, but lacking in our, cu our culture is this sticky fight in relationships and just commitment and honoring commitments we've made in relationships. And it's easy just to give up, and move on, on on relationships. And this song, I hope, and it, from you know, playing it and having people come back and tell me stories, I think it's meant something to some people of like, I, I'm going to stick with it another day. God, tell people we're marching around one more day. Yeah. Don't don't give up just yet on that relationship. Don't give don't give up just yet on your, on that kid. Don't give up just yet. Give it one more day. March around it one more day. And uh, that's kind of become the mantra with the song. And it's been amazing to hear the stories come back. But it's meant a lot to me personally, having the wheels come off it. 25 of marriage and, and now we're celebrating 30 and it's pretty beautiful and uh, it, it was tough but it was you fight through it and all of a sudden you got something beautiful to celebrate and so for the sake of my kids I'm real glad we stuck through that one you know so but yeah we want to save this country we got to save our families yeah we save, fight. We absolutely fight for our country we got to yeah. save, fight for our family yeah. here's Michael Farron Jericho Well, I know you guard your heart now Like a fortress There ain't no one been let inside for years And I know you think you got good reasons for it But it ain't good enough for me to leave you here So I'm gonna walk, walk, walk I'm gonna run Run, run, watch me go, go, go around your heart like Jericho. Ah, oh, baby, I will walk, walk, walk. I'm gonna run, 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 watch me go, go, go around your heart like Jericho. And baby, till your walls come crumbling, crumbling down. And baby, till your walls come. Fall down like 
like Jericho And I know you're gonna fight me With a vengeance But you ain't ever fought anyone like me before Cause I'll do whatever it takes to finally free you I'm stubborn enough to believe love ain't ever lost a war So I'm gonna walk, walk, walk I'm gonna run, run, run Watch me go, go, go around your heart like Jericho Oh baby, I'll walk, walk, walk I'm gonna run Run, run, watch me go, go, go around your heart like Jericho. Baby, to you walls come crumbling, crumbling down. Baby, to you walls come crumbling, crumbling down. I know that you're thinking I'll give up someday and just move on along, but I'll keep walking with you till your walls fall. Jeff, you loved that. What'd you love about I that? Go, man? I wanted to take a solo. I wish go you would have. Yeah, two, three, four. <laughs> They're coming down, coming down, coming down like a shower door, baby. Everybody. That was so good. I'm not following that. That was so good. What are you why talking you, about? Why do you have to just play your guitar to that? Like, why Why did you have... You're, you, I wish everyone could see your face if you're watching on the radio. If you're seeing... You, if you're watching on TV, you could see it. Just joy. You had joy the whole time. And, like, you had to exude it by oh. singing and playing. Why? Well, Neil was speaking about this earlier, but that's our gig. So when we're at our core of what we do, like, like we're obviously trying to make a living and we're trying to be a part of the culture... But this is what we do. Yeah. We jam and we have a great time. I was ready time. for another course because I think we had the harmonies for <laughs> <laughs> I was singing the harmony. I kept hearing it in the air. I'm like, come on, boys. Yeah, let's go. Right, and I'm comfortable now. Would say, Take the high I hope he does the same thing. Here, here, to watch you guys do your craft is beautiful. And Neil, I noticed when he said, uh, blow your trumpets, right? When you broke it down. You love that. You, know, just, you were just oh, like yeah, about that line. It's fantastic. <laughs> what, what about that line? No, it's just... It was a badass bridge. It was awesome. <laughs> it was just, it was a great place for the song to go. And I'm like, oh, crap, this is awesome. <laughs> like, musically, lyric, everything about it was great. Meanwhile, I note that the great Neil Thrasher said I had a badass bridge. So thank you, guys. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's, that's a big compliment bad. today. So. See, we get moved, you know, we get moved by the music. And, and that's what keeps us going and wanting to observe and write what we see, you know, and be yeah. able to do that. To be able to present that and totally. not have to be told that we can't do that. Oh, man, I love that love song so Bird much too because that's, that's not a love song about feelings. That's a love song about fighting. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah all these kinda... all these like poppy love songs out yeah. there, and that's that's not what it is. That's not twenty five years of marriage. Gritty love song. Love song. 
That's right. That's right. Me and Neil write all those. <laughs> <laughs> for, for Katy Perry and all the rest. Oh, my uh, God. Let's go over to you, Neil. Here's yeah. another love song, man. This is a love, love song about the small town. It's a beautiful story. My kids love this one. Tell us about it. Flower States. Wrote this with a buddy of mine, Michael Delaney. And this song was actually, um, when we wrote it, eight years went by before it ever. Come on. Yeah, it was eight years old. It was one of those songs that you put in your top drawer, you know, that's one of your favorites that's uncut. And you've, you've pitched it to everybody. In fact, we were just talking about it. We were just talking about it. He was doing some sides on Montgomery Gentry back in the day. And they were going to track it. And for whatever reason, they didn't. And I wanted to... Th- publicly thank him for not <laughs> no anyway it was it was one of those deals where it was eight years old and i'm like is this thing ever gonna get recorded and <clears throat> get heard like i hear it you know and so i think just to, yeah. uh, to speak to neil like like everybody had known that song in nashville like all of us as songwriters as peers we all knew that song We're like man that song is so awesome if it what finds the right and that's kind of the gig there, too, there right? weren't enough long, long-winded artists that could get through a verse of this song because it's got so many words there's nowhere to take a breath <laughs> it may have been part of it but finally jason aldean we pitched it to him and and he heard it like we did and he actually he'll tell you the story they kept it on their bus i think they had it for like an album or two before they ever recorded it Whoa. and finally did it and when they did the magic happened and he put it out, and it was a big old number one for Man, us. I think of all the gems that are still out there too. But the oh, fact there's that this so many sat for eight years. And I bet here. I bet Jeffrey has two drawers full of <laughs> gems yeah. that you know that he still can't believe hadn't been cut yet. Man, I'm grateful to you for writing this and for Jason for cutting it. Let's hear absolutely. Couple guys in first class on a flight from New York to Los Angeles. Kind of making small talk, killing time, flirting with the flight attendants. 30,000 feet above could be Oklahoma. Just a bunch of square cornfields and wheat farms, man, it all looks the same. Miles and miles of back roads and highways connecting little towns with funny names. Who'd want to live down there in the middle of nowhere? Well, they've never drove through it in the Met the man who plowed that earth, planted that seed, busted his ass for you and me. Or caught a harvest moon in Kansas. You'll understand why God made those flyover states. I bet that mile-long Santa Fe freight train engineer seen it all Just like that flatbed cowboy Stack of U.S. steel on a three-day haul Roads and rails under their feet Yeah, that sounds like a first-class seat On the plains of Oklahoma With a windshield sunset in your eyes like a watercolor painted sky you think heaven store it open you'll understand why God made those flyover Take a ride across the Badlands Feel that freedom on your face Breathe in all that open space And meet a girl from Amarillo You'll understand why God made Hell, you might even want to plant your stakes In those flyover states 
ये Take a ride Take a ride So good, brother <laughs> So good you know, if I may, my, my favorite so thing about that song good. Is how you go You start There's big, right? There's the Badlands There's the watercolor painted sky There's the Harvest Moon of Kansas But then I love how you If it stayed there it wouldn't hit me as much, but then you bring it down to the men who plowed that earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my favorite line is, and I and meet a girl from Amarillo. I got my girl from Chattanooga. What is it about that girl from Amarillo? I don't know. It's just, it's such a flat, barren spot of Texas and there's nothing there. And it's one of the, it's one of the places in middle America that nobody really sees unless you drive through it. Mm-hmm. What about the girls from Amarillo and all uh, those small towns? What makes them different? <sighs> That's a good question. I don't know. They're just raised right. In my, in my view. Yeah. They're raised right. Perfect yeah. answer. Man. Enough said, I think. <laughs> <laughs> man. I love that. You guys got a favorite line of that song? Favorite part? Uh, uh, one of us? Yeah. Man, I, I, just when that chorus hits, and, 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 uh, and, and as a songwriter, um, Neil's use of, uh, to get into the technics of it, yeah. uh, what I call the demolished chord, the diminished chord, you know, that it's just like, <laughs> what is that? It's, it's when he plays that little Willie Nelson number there. The, yeah. And that's, and it uh, sets up the emotion of the lyric every time. And, 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 um, and, and, and the lyrics a little bit different every time, but it, but every time that chord hits it, I just appreciate the way he put that together <laughs> so much. So every time I, I hear to, it. I have to give Delaney, Michael Delaney, a little bit of credit he for that. He did not though. come up with that chord. Dude, he was like, he was like, and he's always got these funky chords and I'm like, what are you doing there? And I'm like, <laughs> but he's, he's got stuff. He, I'm like, what is that? And, he, and but he'll do that and he'll throw those in there and then then he'll, he'll put that in there. I would have done something bland and then gone straight to it. But he... That was Michael Delaney. I can't take credit for that. Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, listen, whether you're uh, on the coast or the flyover states, we're all in this together. We've got to save our country. That's why we're here in Nashville, Tennessee right now, singing these songs, telling these stories. We've got these three gentlemen. So grateful for them. We're going to wrap up. We've got one more break. We'll come up with uh, last grand finale from Mr. Jeffrey Steele here. It's coming up next right here. Sirius XM Patriot, Breitbart News, America Songwriter. Welcome back to American Songwriter, Breitbart News, Breitbart.com, Sirius XM Live from Nashville, Tennessee. we got Michael Fair and Neil Thrasher, Jeffrey Steele. It's been an awesome time, guys. Thank you, man, for sharing your talents with us, sharing these stories. Um, we're going to wrap up with Jeffrey Steele, but before we do that, I just want to give you guys the opportunity. What do we got coming up? How can we follow you guys more? What's happening? I want more. I want more Michael Farron in my life. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, like these guys, I'm really grateful to get to sit on and write songs for other people. But I, on occasion, we throw some songs out there ourselves. And uh, uh, the one I did earlier, uh, Checking In, it, I would say go look for that one because I finally got to do my version of it. Oh, nice. I'm real grateful for others who've cut it. But I uh, finally got to do my version. So I would say, yeah. What's the best that. place to check it out that helps you the most? Oh, yeah, golly. <clears throat> I would just say iTunes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> probably right. It's probably a safe bet. Yeah, the safer <laughs> bet of the... How about you, Neil? What do we got going on? Oh, we got a lot going on. I'm supposed to be retired, but there. I'm busier now. <laughs> yeah, I know. it. I'm busier now than ever. And uh, we just started... Uh, the guys that wrote Try That in a Small Town, me and uh, Tully Kennedy, Kurt Allison, and Kelly Lovelace started a podcast. Us four idiots thought we could entertain folks, <laughs> and uh, it's going good. Though we're having a blast, so that's that's uh, in the making right now. We've got I think five or six episodes that are out right now, so everybody can go check that out anywhere podcast can be found. Search that. Search. Try that in a small town, or just yeah, try, try that. that in a small town Pop-up. podcast. Yeah, it's like try that podcast on Instagram, cool. but it's try that in a small town podcast Beautiful. everywhere else. How about you, Jeffrey? Um, we've got a new single out um, with Gary Lavox, who's the lead singer of Rascal Flats. Uh, I wrote a song for Rascal Flats called What Hurts the Most uh, 18 years ago, and it was one of their biggest hits, and they've re-released a new version with me doing a duet with Gary, and it just came out 
So I got that, and then I'm just, I got a new record coming, and just, I'm all over the country. So J Steel Music on socials and jeffersteel.com. Um, people can keep up with me, and uh, uh, I'm out there. Nice. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff's going to be our last song, but I just want to give you guys a final word, just oh, while we're here, what do you want? What do we want? Where do you want our country to go? What are you praying for, Michael? Where can we go here? Hey, man, I'm, we, there's been a lot of references to truth. Um, and then they would say, the truth will set you free. It will. And I'm praying that the, the majority that I spoke of earlier that seems to have been a little quiet, I pray that they start speaking pretty loudly mm-hmm. because they're there and I think they're waking up. And that's, I'm hopeful. I have a lot of hope and I'm prayerful that those people who really do care who haven't said a lot are about to speak loudly. Mm-hmm. And that's what I hope I see happen. You hopeful too, Neil? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely hopeful. Um, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about, you know, they're praying for peace and, and, and unity. And I, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. And it may not be the bigger plan. I don't know if what God has planned for, for everybody coming together and seeing eye to eye. It may never happen. It probably won't in some instances. But if everybody, you know, if you keep, if you keep God at the forefront and you always pray, pray to him, you don't have to ask for things. Just pray to him in private. And you don't have to, you know what I'm saying? It's just, and, and pray for, uh, pray for your, for peace in your community. And, um, uh, whether we come together or not and see eye to eye on different things, that's, that's all up to him, but we can at least try. We're going to keep trying to do our best and do our part. What are you praying for, Jeffrey? Uh, well, I think the essence of what he just said, uh, Neil, um, uh, the prayer itself is the discipline that we lack in the country right now. And just the simple act of praying every day elevates us, I think, above our humanness and this terrible gravity that we're in down here. And, and the human ending, that's always it's always the same. It's power, it's greed, it's money. But if we can stay in the prayer and, and think of others... Uh, it's basically what these guys are saying. It, uh, I'm reiterating, but um, I think the prayer is everything. I think I think that God's supernatural um, is our hands, you know, our touch, our our word, our hug um, to others uh, in every aspect. And we have to take all the things in our life. I've had a lot of tragedy in my life, and I've tried to take that tragedy and turn it into good for others. And I think if more people were just thinking that way. A little more often, I think. I think the whole world would elevate off the ground a couple inches, you know. Like, and 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 of course, that's a big pipe dream, right? But 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 um, all I know is that we're living in a world of three, three sixty five, twenty four seven media negativity all day and all night long. And if we're in that prayer, I think um, that's the first step of discipline to. Just know that we got yeah. something else. Put we, your phone down and pray. Yeah, We're, right. we, we got something else that's bigger than all this. And, and at the end of the day, it's all that's really going to matter. That's right. Amen. You guys have inspired, encouraged a lot of people today. I'm grateful for you all. What are you going to take us out with here, Jeffrey? I'm going to take you out of the song I wrote one month after 9-11. Wow. And the planes were just starting to get back up in the sky. I was out in Durango, Colorado uh, with a buddy of mine, Reed Nielsen, who's passed away now, one of my favorite songwriters. Uh, He was such an educator for me as a songwriter, but we were out in Durango at the songwriter festival and we had our guitars and we were in the hotel room and I took my guitar out and and I was just doing this. I always do this when I take my guitar out and start tuning it up, you know, and he says, hey man, what are you playing? And, and, and I said, I'm not playing anything. I'm just tuning my guitar, you know? (laughs) And, and um, he goes, he goes, play that. Play those notes like you're playing a banjo, you know? And so I started going. And all of a sudden there was this, you know, easel in front of me with, you know, like, uh, and we started talking about my rental car drive from Albuquerque to Durango one month after 9-11 and the state of the world that the world was in. We wrote this song. There's a for sale sign on a big old rusty tractor. You can't miss it. It's the first thing that you see. And just up the road, a pale blue water tower. With I love Jenny painted in bright green. Hey, that's my uncle Ray there by the courthouse. 
He'll be lowering the flag when the sun goes down. And this is my town. Yesterdays, this is my town. Where I ran off, cause I got mad when it came to blows with my old man, this is my town. But I came back to settle down, and it's where they'll put me in the ground. My town. Well, there ain't much going on here since they closed the mill. But that whistle still blows every day at noon. And there's a bunch of us still going down to the diner. And wondering if that interstate's still coming through. But come Sunday morning service at the Church of Christ. This is my town. Yeah, where I was born and I was raised, and I keep all my yesterdays. This is my town. Here I ran off because I got mad when it came to blows. With my old man, this is my town. I bought and painted up that rusty tractor. You can't miss it. It's sitting right there in our yard. The county came and they took that water tower. Well, that's my Jenny with the babies in the car. And we're off to Sunday service at the Church of Christ. Neil and Michael, we show you around. My town. Yeah, where I was born and I was raised and I keep all my yesterdays. This is my town. Where I ran off because I got mad when it came to blows. My old man, this is my town. the ground my town this is my town you may not be able to sing you may not be able to play the guitar but you have a voice this is American songwriter I'm Breitbart News Sirius XM spread the word